imagine yourself at the hospital. You're in the observation room and you're looking down as a loved one is on the operating table in the middle of a life-saving operation. As you look down, what do you expect to see? You probably expect to see a scene out of Grey's Anatomy. A team of doctors and nurses, led by McDreamy, of course, each with, each with a job to do in the effort to save your person's life. And you expect to see this because that's normal. That's what we expect. Now imagine you are in the same hospital, in the same operating room, looking down as your loved one is on that same operating table in the middle of the same life-saving operation. But this time, something is different. This time, you don't see the same team of doctors and nurses. This time, you wonder, where is McDreamy and the team? Instead, what you see is a robot looming over the operating table, multiple arms, each equipped with a different surgical instrument. There's still a team, but it's not engaged in quite the same way, and fear grips your chest. Where is the surgeon that is supposed to be taking care of your person? And then it hits you. This is a robot performing surgery. Is this robot holding your loved one's life in its mechanical arms? Fearfully, fearfully, you look around, and when you finally find the surgeon, he's across the room, intently staring into some machine. What you don't know is that this surgeon is looking at a zoomed-in, 3D, high-definition video of the inside of the body where he, the surgeon, is performing the surgery using the help of a teleoperated robotic system. This surgeon is using the latest technology in robot-enabled surgery. As a kid, robots were nothing more than science fiction for me. It was not about the practical value of robots. It was all about the entertainment value, how robots could inspire play and imagination. Kids today have it different. Robots are not just contained in Hollywood. I have three young children, each under the age of 10, and each of them has already built their own robot. Build your own robot kits are commonplace. There are robot programs in schools. I've had the opportunity to volunteer for each of the last two years at the robotics program at the elementary school, where my daughter and her classmates have been learning to build and program robots. It's amazing how available this technology is today. For years, robotic technology has been on a positive evolution. And in 2014, I made a bet and I staked my career on it. I bet that the innovations being applied to self-driving cars would translate into the warehouse and that broadly robotic technology was evolving to finally transform society in the way that I imagined as a child. It seemed obvious. If you can take technology and apply it to a car and create a robot that can operate in a fluid and dynamic environment such as our streets, why can't you take that same technology and put it in a warehouse where you have structure and process? So, as a brand new industry analyst at the time, I started up a first of its kind research practice on commercial service robotics. Through this practice, I had the opportunity to shape and drive the ideas and direction of the market for non-traditional robotic applications. Since then, I've guided, advised, invested in, and built business related to the robotics industry. Today, I lead a robotics practice at a top-tier supply chain software company that I joined in 2019 when I was brought in to build from the ground up a mobile robotics business unit. That business unit today is recognized as a global leader in mobile robotic integrations in the warehouse. This technology is transforming so much that we do both professionally and personally. In fact, all of you have probably indirectly interacted with a robot within the last week or so, and chances are you didn't even know it. Mobile robots are the fastest growing technology in warehouse operations. They're allowing businesses to keep up with crushing consumer demands, while at the same time combat a very challenging labor environment. Through the, just as in the surgeon using the latest technology in his or her craft, the people that are picking, packing, and shipping your, warehouse, your online orders are using the latest technology in their industry, and it is transformative. There's tremendous benefit to the business in these scenarios. They are able to improve productivity 100, 200, 300 percent. These are massive gains for a business. And that translates into lower cost. Through this productivity gains, they reduce the number of people they need to do the same amount of work. It's obvious. There's also benefits to you, the consumer. You get access to anything you could possibly want at the click of a button. 
you get higher quality outputs from these warehouses, right? But what about the benefits to the user, to the human beings, to the individuals that are actually interacting with these robots? So as I mentioned, I work in this industry and I've had the opportunity to interview dozens of people that have gone from traditional methods of working in a warehouse to using robots in their work. Their stories are often quite similar. First off, they're always excited just to be using robots. This is the latest and greatest in technology and they're getting the opportunity to use it every day in their job. It's given them a new skill set that's increasingly in demand in the market today. But more impactfully is the way in which it changed the work, changes the work that they do. One person once said it so impactfully to me. She was one of the first people that I interviewed. She said, by using these robots, it has given me the rest of my day back. I said, what do you mean the rest of your day back? She said, well, the way we used to do this, I had to work, walk miles every day just to do my job, miles through this warehouse. At the end of the day, I was sore, I was achy, I was tired, and I was cranky, and I brought that home. Today, I don't have to walk nearly a quarter as much as I used to. I'm less achy at the end of the day. That translates into more energy. I'm in a better mood when I go home, and it makes me a better mother. I have more energy to spend time with my young daughter, and that was one of the most impactful things that I had personally heard. The job I was doing was creating positive benefit for individuals. This technology is not just transforming the industries where it's being deployed, it is reforming the life of the users. So robots in warehouses, robots in surgery, completely different industries. And we know robotic technology has been in industrial manufacturing for many years now. But how would you feel if a robot showed up to deliver your pizza? What about a robot arriving at your hotel room with your room service order? Imagine you're sitting at your favorite restaurant and a robot comes up tableside to deliver you your meal. Robots flipping burgers or diffusing bombs. These are all actual use cases that exist today where robots are becoming more prominent in our daily lives. There are even full body powered exoskeleton suits. Yes, just like you imagine from movies such as Aliens and Avatar that are designed to take strain off the human body when lifting heavy items. An industry colleague, and now good friend of mine, once changed my perspective on what it meant to be a robot. See, early on when I first started looking into this technology, I thought, robot means full-on automation, complete automation. She said, no, robotic technology can be applied to human, to augment human capabilities and give people different skills. I said, why don't you come out and check it out for yourself? Said, of course, check that out. So I got on a plane and I flew to Salt Lake City. When I got there, I put on a lab coat, protective goggles and some ear protection, and strapped myself into a vest. This vest gave me the controls to a robotic system that was across the yard. This robotic system had two six foot long robotic arms attached to a bobcat skid steer. And I was controlling this from across the yard. Each robotic arm had enough power to lift a thousand pounds, but was also sensitive enough with enough force feedback to allow me to pick up an egg without crushing it or pick up and use power tools. This was my first experience with this sort of thing and it absolutely blew my mind. Robots can give people superpowers. Now back to the exoskeleton suit thing. How impactful would it be to someone whose job it involves lifting heavy items every day to have a tool that they can attach to their body that would take the strain of lifting those items off of their body, reduce the risk of a work-related, strain-related injury, Take that completely off the table for that person. Someone who's lifting luggage or lifting tires every day. Robots are even being applied to human repair and augmentation. Imagine that. Adding robotic technology to the human body. There are robotic prosthetics that are being designed that can restore muscle function of a lost lower arm, for example. I wanna say that again. Robotic prosthetics that can restore muscle function. Can you imagine a future where someone who's lost the ability to use their legs can walk again with the help of robots? That future is closer than you think. There's so much potential to benefit from the use of robotics. But with that comes risk. There's a dark side that we need to be aware of. As robots become more prominent and more prolific into our daily lives, we need to be prepared 
to ask the difficult questions. What about job displacement? What about privacy concerns? What about the potential for misuse of this technology? Speaking of misuse, autonomous weapons systems. The market for autonomous weapons systems is forecast to exceed $30 billion by 2030. Companies and governments alike are spending billions of dollars to figure out how to automate killing machines. And that's not necessarily new. iRobot, the company that many of you are likely familiar with that makes the Roomba and other home-based robotics actually sold off their weapons division several years ago. They had a vision to become the home-based robotics company and they realized they couldn't do that and also be associated with killer robots. For, gen <laughs> for generations, technology advancements have been applied to create more effective tools of war. However, until recently, those tools required manual intervention. There were men and women in place that were accountable to the use of these weapons. With advanced artificial intelligence and robotic systems, machines are being built that can automate killing. Granted, there are efforts in place to try to control this, but spending and research is going forward and that Pandora's box is already open. Robots are even reforming war. Now, beyond the war machine, we also need to think about the economic impact of the advancement and proliferation of robotics. As more and more human roles become automated by robotic technology, what does that do? Now, bear in mind, I've been a proponent and advocate for the use and growth of robotics for many years now, and I do believe that there is more upside than down, but we do need to consider the risk that comes with complete automation. Imagine, if you will, a local economy that was built up to support the local warehousing industry. And then that local warehousing industry were to become full, uh, over automated. There would be no need for the local, uh, the local sandwich shop, no need for the local salon, and no need for the local convenience store because there would not be enough people in that community to spend their money on those services and robots don't tend to get their hair done. So as this technology continues to evolve and continues to proliferate, we as a society need to be prepared to look at ways to, to balance the benefits with the risk of this technology. Robotic technology has so much potential for positive impact on humanity, but we do need to be aware of the downside risk. From the battlefield to the hospital, from the farm to the restaurant, from the warehouse to your homes, the robots aren't just coming, they are here. This technology is here today, and we as a society need to be aware and instill policies and procedures and governance to ensure that we maximize the value of these tools and we minimize the risk. Thank you.